Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to continue on with my little Christmas winter mini-series that I've been doing for you over the last few videos. And we've got a collaboration beer to look at today that I think will be really quite interesting. This one is half Swedish, half American. For the Swedish side of things, we're going to visit a brewery I know pretty well. And for the American side of things, we're going to visit a brewery I've never encountered before. So for the Swedish side, we are going to stick to Skåne here in the south of Sweden. We're heading up towards Helsingborg once again and we're having a look at another beer from Brewski Microbrewery. So this one is called the Liftoff Game and it's an Imperial Stout coming in at 12.5%. Not a style that Brewski are usually associated with, mainly these guys are sort of New England hazy IPAs and sort of sour Berliner Weisses and stuff like this, but this particular Imperial Stout is brewed with strawberries, chocolate and vanilla and it's brewed in collaboration as well with Bottle Logic Brewing who come from Anaheim just out to the east of Los Angeles over in California. Like I said earlier, my very first encounter with them. And if memory serves me correctly, this is the very first beer that I'm trying from Anaheim, or the very first brewery I'm trying from Anaheim, I should say. But apparently, they're very good when it comes to Imperial Stouts and barrel aging and stuff like this. So an interesting combination, this one, and uh, hopefully it's another really good beer. This one was released, incidentally, on the 1st of November 2019 through say Stimbolag over here in Sweden, the state-owned alcohol stores for those of you watching in America. Um, and I can't remember whether this was part of the Yuldrika list, the Christmas drinks, or whether it was part of the local and small seat, the local and just small assortment beers. It was on one of those two lists on the 1st of November 2019, and I ordered it. So here we are now making this review. But it should be a really interesting beer. One brewery that I know very well, and another one from America I've never encountered, but have a very good reputation within this style. So curious to see how it turns out, and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. So anyway, as is usual with my review, then I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery websites, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brewski before. No doubt there will be some more in the fairly near future. There's also a link down there to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Bottle Logic Brewing. Very first time I'm encountering one of their beers, as I said. There's all the usual social media there as well. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you and another one for all the American beers. Both of those are constantly being added to and this beer will appear in both of those because it's half and half and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about these breweries and we'll kick off with Brewski since they are the home brewery in this case. So Brewski, as I've told you before, were founded back in 2014 and they're based in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the very south of Sweden. A nice pretty town actually that I would recommend you visit if you get the chance. But the founders of this company are Marcus Jarmusson, Johan Britson, Alfred Olsen and Robin Skoglund and all of these guys were inspired to get into home brewing their own beers and they were kind of just inspired by beer generally when uh, finding out about the West Coast American craft beers. That's where a lot of people kind of started off, if you like. But Marcus is the main brewing man at the company, and he was originally associated with the High Nose brand of beer brewed up at Hoogenis Bregory, a little bit to the northwest of Helsingborg. And some of those beers are still brewed there, and the original Brewski beers were brewed up there as well, although all of the Brewski beers are now brewed at their own brewery, which you can find in the train yards to the south of the main station. And they're brewing around 100,000 litres of beer there per month, so their annual capacity capacity is well over a million litres of beer per year and they are you know fairly well known throughout Europe the, the, these guys these days particularly for their Fieber series but in 2016 they also started up their own beer festival called Brewski Val you would have seen my festival video that I did for the last one in 2019 um, in the first year this had over 40 different types of 40 different brewers rather lots of different types of beer and it's been scaled up gradually over the last few years I believe in 2019 there was somewhere in the region of 80 or 90 different brewers there. Uh, from 2016 they also started opening up their brewery once a week and this quickly evolved to um 
to have their own, to, for them actually having a bar in the brewery, to having their own bar, which you can find in the centre of Helsingborg as well. This is called Barsky, and uh, this has been open since 2018, if I remember correctly. And if you go there, you can get some really nice ramen. It's not fully authentic ramen. The chef there is American, and he's got his own take on it. But I have to say, as someone who has a good bit of experience with Japan, I think he is doing quite a nice job. And they've always got some of the random brewski beers that you're not going to find otherwise. So I would recommend that you go and check out Barsky up in uh, Helsingborg as well. And hopefully I can get up there again soon and film a little out and about video. But as of November 2019, these guys have produced around 300 different types of beer. As I've mentioned to, do, to you before, this brewery are mainly known for... Um, New England hazy type IPAs, some sour beers, Berliner Weisses and stuff. They're also very good when it comes to adding fruit into beer as well. Their Fieber series is quite well known. The, Magen, the, the Mango Fieber, the Passion Fieber, the Apricose Fieber and uh, all of these sort of things. The Fieber beers are the ones that you are most likely to find around the rest of Europe. And I know that they're doing a little bit of contract brewing as well. There's a brewery over in America that's brewing some of the Fieber series for them and uh, distributing, them, distributing them around the US as well. So this is one of the Swedish breweries that you are more likely to come across if you're uh, watching from outside of Sweden. They are very good and I highly recommend that you check them out. My favourite beer from these guys so far, probably it was the... Um the Conan uh, double IPA, that's a beautiful, beautiful beer. Um, the triple berry pie on the sour side of things, that's also a very, very nice Berliner Weisse as well. And those are probably my two favourite beers that I've had from them so far. But if you get the chance to try some of Brewski's beers and you're a fan of sour beers and uh, New England IPAs and fruit IPAs and stuff, you certainly won't be disappointed with these guys. Definitely one of the best Swedish craft breweries around at the moment, in my humble opinion. So, um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Brewski for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, course you can check out the brewery website in the description below you can follow them on facebook and instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and if you're interested in those 300 different types of beers that they've done you can check out the rate beer and untapped pages as well so um yeah that's all about brewski let's move on to the american side of things then to bottle logic brewing who i've never encountered before so bottle logic brewing as i mentioned earlier are based in anaheim which is in orange county near los angeles in california on the american west coast but the brewery opened back in February of 2014 and it was founded by Wes Parker, um, Steve Napolitano and Brandon Buchner. Uh, all three of these guys are Anaheim locals and Brandon had worked as a personal trainer um, Wes had worked in IT and Steve had worked in the legal sector and the guys had been friends for a long time and they got into home brewing and later they decided that they wanted to quit their good jobs and make their uh, living with their own brewery which they began doing in 2013. So today Wes is the head brewer, Brandon deals with the sales and marketing side of things and Steve is the brewery CEO and over the last few years they've worked at in increasing their capacity and introducing new beers to the range. They've got four separate ranges apparently, this is their core range, they've got the core Old classics which are traditional beers you know like German Helles and Dunkels and uh, Belgian style beers and stuff like this from what I understand. They've got their Proto series as well which is their experimental range and they've also got the Hoptometron series which is the limited edition things that they do. Um, in 2018 they built a larger brewery next to the original building to increase the capacity and this new building that they've added on to the old one houses a new restaurant and tap room as well and as of November 2019 when I'm filming this review for you they've produced around 600 and 25 different kinds of beer so a very very prolific brewery this one you know for a brewery that's only been around what about you know six years nearly that is pretty damn impressive 600 different types of beer over a hundred different types of beer per year that's not a thing to be sniffed at at all but like I said these guys are very interested in barrel aging and they've got a whole host of different styles that you can try and they have a very good reputation from what I gather they have been fairly active over here in Sweden doing things up in Gothenburg with with, uh, the likes of Dugas Brewery and I think they've done a few things with Omnipoil and stuff like that over in Stockholm as well. So yeah, cool to try my first beer from these guys and hopefully when I do make it out to California these guys can be one of the breweries that I do visit. I'm sure when I go over there I will be doing a hell of a lot of beer tourism as well as taking in the sites and stuff like this as well but um, yeah that's all you really need to know about Bottle Logic Brewing for the moment that was all I was able to find on those guys really but um, if you want to learn more you can check out the brewery website of course you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and uh, to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out all the different beers that they've done on Rate Beer and Untapped as well so um, yeah let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then and see how we get on curious to see what this one is like because like I say um, 
Brewski don't really do many Imperial Stouts. I think I've only reviewed about three or so from them over the years. And Bottle Logic Brewing are supposed to have a very good reputation within this kind of category, if you like. So there you can see the astronaut with um, different, you know, these different coloured balloons. Obviously, one signifying vanilla, one signifying chocolate, and one signifying strawberry. As I mentioned to you at the start of the video, a 12.5% Imperial Stout, this one, with strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla added into the brew. There you can see on the side the Bottle Logic brewing symbol, and if we move the can up a little bit, there you can see the little Brewski guy as well, which always used to be on the bottle caps when Brewski were using those little 330 milliliter stubby bottles. This one incidentally is a 330 milliliter can, one of these tall, almost red bull shaped ones that Brewski have got into using recently. So um, yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. It says on the side here, this one is best before the 17th of September 2024. So you could age this one if you want, but um, you know, I just wanted to try this because it was released for the Christmas sortiment. I'm not even sure if it was actually in the Yule Drinker list, but you know, it's not often that Brewski do an Imperial Stout, so I thought this one should be really interesting to try. And I think this is going to be on the sweeter side of things as well. So let's get it out and into the glass and we will see how we get on. Should go the last bit up and see if we can get a little bit ahead on this, but 12.5%. That might be a little bit difficult, yeah. So as you can see, not much head pouring on this beer. Not that that's massively important, but you can see there was a little frothy ring around the edge of the glass. And I would say, you know, it's a very light, kind of beige, sort of fawn colour, this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. A few little ones heading up towards the bottom of where that head should be. But um, yeah, a lovely dark ebony kind of rosewood colour. If you shine the light through this, it does have a little bit of a Coca-Cola coloured edge to it, but nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider what style it is. But if I put my fingers behind the glass, you cannot see anything through this one simply because of the colour. But if you shine it up to the light, again, it's not clear in the slightest. This is a very, very dark, murky and hazy beer. So yeah, nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its... Uh, appearance when you consider what style it is and the head has completely just disappeared on this one so um yeah let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this beer i'm really curious to see what it's like oh yeah so straight away with this one the vanilla again jumps out at you and um, it almost smells like strawberry ice cream to be honest with you um the strawberries that come out of this are very, very candied. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it's flavour essence that's been put in this rather than, um, than straight up strawberries. Um, you know, it's kind of, it seems that this one, it's got that sort of almost candied aroma that you expect of some of these Omnipoyo um, cakey type Imperial Stouts. It really smells a lot like that, actually. And there's a lot of people don't like adding the flavour essences into uh, into beers and things like that because it's not purest brewing. But I guess creating an ideal base beer for these is a bit of an art um, in itself, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, a very candied smelling Imperial Stout, this one. Candied strawberries, the vanilla kind of mixing in with that. It reminds me of these old Campino sweets that we used to have back in Scotland. Strawberries and cream. It really, really reminds me of that. Um, yeah, that's a beautiful smelling beer I have to say I really like I love sweet stouts and the aromas you get off them this is really nice um underneath the kind of candied strawberries though you do pick up a bit of a milky chocolate there's maybe a little bit of a dark kind of high percentage cocoa chocolate like a 70 80 percent one but to me that takes a bit of a back seat compared to the more milky elements but it's maybe the vanilla that's giving the impression of there being a more milky chocolate to this beer but yeah the strawberries they almost have a teeny little bit of tartness to them but mainly they come across as quite candied and quite, um, yeah, quite candied and quite um, milkshakey, to be honest, almost. It's almost like a kind of strawberry ice cream sort of aroma, strawberry milkshake aroma that comes out of this one. It reminds me a little bit, my dad always used to buy a type of ice cream called Neapolitan, and it was three stripes, chocolate, strawberry and vanilla. So I do wonder if that's what this, um, if that's what this beer is based on, of course. But, um... Yeah, the aroma of this one is very, very nice. Um, in terms of hoppiness and things like that, you can pick up a teeny little bit of earthiness. Um, there's maybe a little bit of Williamette or something being added into this, because um, you can pick up some nice juicy red fruits. There's a little bit of a kind of raisiny sharpness, a little bit of a more kind of figgy juiciness, and some blackberry, blackcurranty complexities to the beer. Maybe a little bit 
of grassiness as well, and a, as I say, a little touch of earthiness, then those will all come from the hops right enough. But mainly, this is a very kind of straight up, sort of sweet um, imperial stout in terms of its aroma. There's maybe a few undertones of like, um, there's maybe a slight woodiness to this one, maybe a little bit of a kind of licorice um kind of treacly brown sugary note in there as well. So there's a little, there's a few little complexities to this beer, but mainly it's very straight up and very candied. It reminds me a lot of some of these cakey type stouts that you get from, uh, that you get from the likes of uh, Omnipoyo and uh, Amundsen Brewery up in Norway as well. So yeah, maybe I, this one could be classed as a pastry stout, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. But we're going to try this one now and see how we get on. So this one is the Liftoff Game, an Imperial Stout with strawberry, uh, chocolate and vanilla coming in at 12.5% from Brewski Microbrewery here in Helsingborg in Skåne in the south of Sweden and uh, Bottle Logic Brewing, who come from Anaheim in California over in America. Let's get stuck into this one. Stanja, Skull, cheers. Yeah, that's really pretty nice. Um, yeah, straight away, there's no doubt in my mind, this one is a sweet stout. If you like the 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 big sort of cakey sweet stouts that you get from the likes of Dugas Brewery in Gothenburg or Omnipoyo in Stockholm um, or the, the pastry stouts you get from Amundsen, you know you are going to enjoy this one. This is really, really nicely done. Some of the stouts that are coming from Lervig up in Norway as well are really good in this. Th this is definitely one of these sweet dessert type stouts actually. That's a bit of a monster, I have to say, but it's a beautiful, beautiful beer. You are going to get a little bit of alcohol warmth from this one, just down in your chest here. Not that that is uh, such a bad thing, of course, but yeah, a really, really nicely done beer from uh, Brewski. And I would go as far as saying that this is perhaps the best Imperial Stout that I've had from them so far. Not that there was anything wrong with any of the other ones, um, but this is just the one that kind of ticks the boxes for me. But as I've mentioned to you on the channel before, I'm a little bit of a sucker when it comes to uh, a sweet stout or indeed a coffee stout. And uh, most of the brewski ones that I've had before have been the more roasty toasty ones, but they've not been um, coffee stouts actually from what I remember. But um, yeah, this one is, is really nice actually. If you get the chance to try this, I highly recommend that you do. So yeah, let's break the flavour of this down a little bit then. So, um, the middle of your palate is blanketed with this very smooth kind of creamy quality. It's almost like the vanilla just completely takes over the middle of your tongue. You can feel that there is a little bit of a, a kind of uh, chocolatey base to the beer as well. And it's it really is a, a mix of kind of milk chocolate and dark chocolate that's forming that base layer along with the, the vanilla. The kind of candied strawberry flavours, they come out a little bit more in towards the centre of the palate, but I think I would stick with that. The sort of baseline of this beer is the sort of vanilla flavours and that milky chocolate. They form, the, they basically take over the whole of the middle of your tongue. When you move into the centre of your palate, there's definitely an element of brown sugar to this one, a sort of sweet caramelly kind of flavour in there. It's a little bit... Um, it's not even toasty or anything, it is a very sweet caramelly note to this one. And as you move further back on the palate, that's where you it, where you get more of the kind of strawberry notes. It's almost like you've got a little kind of oval shape in the middle of your palate and then round the edge of that oval is where the, the strawberry flavours are coming out of this one. It definitely comes across as a sort of creamy, strawberry, candied, milkshakey sort of flavour. I think it's, it's, it's quite like that, to be honest with you, like strawberry ice cream almost. But yeah, it really, this this beer, the flavour combinations in this beer really remind me of the Neapolitan ice cream that my dad always used to buy. The three, the chocolate vanilla strawberry ice cream that was this, in the tub, it was uh, uh, strips of ice cream basically. Um, you know, that was, my dad was always the one who gave us ice cream when we were young, which was great. We always just, you always knew if you asked him for ice cream, he was going to give you it because he loved it himself. But um yeah, I think this is a stout that he would like actually, so maybe I need to get another can of this and uh, give him that, save it for his birthday or something like that. But yeah, this is a really, really lovely 
Imperial Stout, this one. If you like sweet stouts and you like these sort of cakey stouts from Omni Poyo, Amundsen, Lervig, uh, Dugas Bregory as well, these kind of things, you are really going to enjoy this one. The malt base is quite simple. I mean, the further you go into the aftertaste, if you go to the front corners of your palate and move in, you might get a little bit of a kind of woody undertone to this one and if you go to the centre of your palate and move further forward from there you might get a few kind of nutty tones to the beer as well but mainly um, it's that chocolatey vanilla -y base that you have, the milky chocolatey qualities and then the sort of brown sugars in the middle of your palate. It's an oily caramel, it's not taking over the flavour of the beer and then the sort of strawberry milkshake notes on the outside of that but um, yeah this is really quite nicely done and I'm wondering if this has lactose in it, it does yeah it does say on the side here it's got um, lactose in it so that probably explains a little bit of the creaminess and smoothness of the beer and why the vanilla is also so kind of prominent in the flavour the, the, the lactose will smooth out a lot of the black malts and things like that in the middle of your palate so um, yeah very very smooth um, drink uh, sippable, I guess you should say, Imperial Stout with this one. You're not going to session this one at all at 12.5%. At 12 you'd be a bit of a mug if you did that. But yeah, lovely beer this. Best Imperial Stout I've had from Brewski. Yeah, and a very good introduction to bottle logic, I should say, as well. It's always the thing when you review a brewery for the first time, you've, you know, uh, and you've got, if you've got a collaboration beer that's a brewery you know very well, and one that you don't know very well, you're always going to kind of talk about the, the main, the brewery that you know a little bit more. But as I say, Bottle Logic have a very good reputation for um, high alcohol beers and barrel aging and stuff. And this is certainly a very good introduction to these guys. So hopefully Brewski are learning from, from these guys and thinking they will do a few more Imperial Stouts over the future. That's my one criticism of Brewski is that they do need to diversify what styles they're doing a little bit. But they're very good at what they do generally. Um, on the hoppy side of things with this beer then, Back corners of the palate, there is a teeny little bit of earthiness there. It's a very light but still very smooth earthiness. That spreads forward a little bit. You can pick up a little bit of a floral quality on the front corners of your palate, but then round the very front curve of the tongue, it's just that little bit lighter and uh, and grassy, to be honest with you. And then behind the front curve of the palate, of course, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And it's it, that's a really nice aspect of this one as well. It's got some interesting fruity qualities to it. So yeah, when you take this beer in, there's maybe a teeny tiny little bit of a sort of raisiny sharpness to the beer, but that fades away very, very quickly, and it, it quickly evolves to be a more kind of juicy, figgy sort of note. Behind that, the, you know, in that bit behind the front curve of your tongue, um, it really is kind of a, a juicy, figgy quality that just blankets that whole part. But as I say, when you take the beer in, a little bit sharp and raisiny, smooths out really nicely and as you move further towards the tip of the tongue the further that you go into the aftertaste you're going to get some blackberries and black curranty flavours out of this one too so the further you go into the aftertaste the, the sort of lactosey vanilla and milky chocolate kind of flavours push their way out of the beer there's a bit of the candied strawberry there as well and then the black curranty blackberry flavours um, start to push their way out as well it's not tart at all this beer it's a very kind of candied sweet type stout this one. I mean if you like the, the likes of the Noah or the Aeon as it's now called from Omni Poyo, the um, Yellow Belly. I'm trying to think what else, what the other ones were. Um, it's gone right out of my head now. The You know all these different sweet stouts from Lervig, Omni Poyo, Dugas and things like that. This is one that is most definitely going to tick the boxes for you. This is the best Imperial Stout I've had from Brewski yet and as I say a very good introduction to, uh, to bottle logic too so thumbs up to both breweries involved here they've pulled off a really lovely Imperial Sweet Stout so try this if you get the chance I'm certainly going to enjoy the rest of this one that's for sure but yeah I mean it's it to me it comes across as quite a straightforward Imperial Stout. It's definitely not the most complex one that you're going to come across, but it's one of these ones that's just really well done. And to be honest, um, after you've reviewed 1900, nearly 2000 beers, you can't really ask for much more. You're, you're wanting things that will make you think a little bit, but you want your beers to be well done at the same time. And this one certainly ticks both of those boxes, so it gets a very good review from me. Big thumbs up to this beer. Try it for yourself, like I said. In terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say that this is a, a full-bodied beer. It's not the thickest one that you're going to come across right enough, so it's at the bottom end of full-bodied for me. 
Carbonation is very smooth. This mouthfeel is a combination of both oily and uh, and creamy. It's definitely got that creamy element to it because of the lactose that's in there. In terms of hoppy bitterness and IBUs, I'd be surprised if you're getting more than about 25 IBUs out of this, even with all the dark malts and stuff like that. The lactose really takes this one out and the sort of sweetness that you get out of the beer as well. I'd be very surprised if there's more than about 25 IBUs to this beer. The malt base, like I said, in the middle of your palate, very, very smooth because of the lactose, really quite sweet as well. And you've got some lovely kind of candied sweetness in the middle of your palate as well. On the fruity side of things, a little teeny bit sharp when you take it in, but really it, it, it kind of moves out and smooths out very nicely and you get some lovely figgy and black currant blackberry flavours out of this one. A bit of an oily fruity character, but at the same time very, very juicy. So yeah, a very, very well balanced beer this one. It just, for me, it ticks a lot of the boxes, but like I said, I'm a sucker for a sweet imperial stout. So yeah, I don't know if you could class this one as a pastry stout. I'd be interested to hear your opinion on that in the description below but for me a lovely beer that I certainly wouldn't hesitate to uh, to drink again but I think when it's 12.5 percent and it's a collaboration beer probably I won't drink this one again it's probably one that I won't come across uh, but who knows it might appear on tap in Barsky at some point you never know about that but yeah a lovely beer this one and uh, really cool to review this for you here on the channel a very good introduction to uh, Bottle Logic, as I mentioned earlier, and a great Imperial Stout from Brewski, which is always good. As I say, I wish they would do a few more different styles. But yeah, let's leave it at that for this one then. This one was the Liftoff Game, an Imperial Stout at 12.5% ABV with strawberry, chocolate and vanilla flavours from... Uh, Brewski Microbrewery in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the very south of Sweden and Bottle Logic from Anaheim just out to the east of Los Angeles over in California in America. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from both Brewski and Bottle Logic too. Like I said, hopefully I can review some more beers from Bottle Logic at some point in the future. This was my very first encounter of them and you will definitely see some more Brewski ones at some point very soon as well. But thank you again for watching. Check out my social media and I will catch you guys very soon. Until the next time, Slanja just now and I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, school, cheers. Make sure you check out this beer, the Liftoff Game from Brewski and Bottle Logic. Cheers.